How are things going? Oh, pretty fierce. No worse than usual. Everyone's under pressure, but that's the way we like it. Yes, I hear you've expanded since I was down here last. Particularly in your classified department. That's right. Management giving you all the help you want? Oh, yes, they're pretty cooperative. Take a few. Oh, ah, thanks. Your boss going to be available? Yes, and the company secretary. They're the two directly concerned with security. I fixed it for five o'clock. Oh, good. That'll give us a chance to have a stroll round. Oh, by the way, do you mind? Not at all. Go ahead. I told them it was just a routine chat. Well, it's a little bit more than that. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, anything particular to report? No, no crises or panics. No one's reported any lost documents. I hope all our classified documents are intact. They ought to be. I'm glad to hear that. But what about access? As usual, only those on the need-to-know list raised by the project boss can get at the documents. Mm. And that list is drawn up by the representative head of departments in conjunction with you? The chaps in charge make out their list in the first place and I work it over with them. They're pretty good at keeping the numbers down, but I usually manage to reduce them a bit further. What about registration? You happy that's watertight? As watertight as it possibly can be in business. Classified material comes to me in the first place and is registered in. Then I register it out to the heads of departments. After that, it's up to them to see that the material they've drawn is distributed to the right person, signed for, and kept in approved type cabinets. You register it in personally? Always. Mm. Or my girl. Now, has anyone else got a key to that safe? No. But my girl knows the combination, and she has to stand in for me if I'm away. Well, yes, of course. Well, that looks all right to me. Uh, how about a stroll around? Sure. Where would you like to start? Uh, well, what about your design department? All right. Let's go along. Driver's in charge. I think you've met him. Yes, we've met, all right. You came round about six months ago. Didn't we have a bit of a discussion about security interfering with work? More like an argument, I'd say. Well, if you don't bring these problems into the open, you can't expect to solve them. After all, it's our business to try and help you. If security was carried to its logical conclusion, everything else would freeze up. We've got to find a practical way between the requirements of your job and ours. I admit you've got a job to do. Well, it's nice to meet someone who admits it's a job and doesn't just call it a bloody nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> so good? Oh, thanks. But seriously, though, do you find any particular conflict between the requirements of your own work and security? No, not providing there's reasonable flexibility. Mm. There's got to be flexibility. I mean, you can't keep our kind of work within office hours. A man's got to be able to take files home and they could contain classified material. If classified material is taken home, it must be a very exceptional case. I agree. But to take care of the exceptional case, our security brief issued to senior people lays down a code of behaviour. I register the documents out to driver in the first place and he passes them on to those on his list as required. Then we do a further re-registration. Until they are required, I keep them here under lock and key. Where do you keep the key? Do you carry it on you? No, no, no. It's kept here in the office. It's quite safe. In the bottom right-hand drawer of your desk? Well, uh, yes. In an old cigarette tin. There it is. How did you know I kept it there? That's where it's always kept. It's an old scientific custom. If you don't keep it on you, or better still, in a combination safe or key box, an expert will always find it. And it's only the work of a moment to get a wax impression. I'll keep it on me in the future. One or two things need tidying up in there. Yes, you took the point about the key, all right. Where would you like to go now? What about a quick look at the drawing office? We're just going through to Mr. Burrows. Very good, sir. Are all these classified? Oh, yes. But they're not all marked secret? They're all marked, but not in clear. Some are in code. That's our technical director's idea. He feels that interested parties, and above all, the downright curious looking for information, aren't so likely to get a lead if they don't see secrets stamped all over the place. But any interested party is bound to be an expert. He'll know what the drawing's about. Not stamping it secret won't put him off. Well, that's what I rather feel. The technical director's other point is that when people know they're handling secret documents, they tend to get self-important. You mean they tell their friends and start talking in pubs? Exactly. Well, that can work both ways. People are always liable to talk about their jobs, but if they see it stamped secret, they've got a positive reason for not doing so. Their job depends on it. I do think that not stamping in clear is a mistake. Some weeks ago, the technical director himself, 
produced one of these drawings at a meeting with clients. He didn't notice the code. We were ready to talk him down fast. I wonder if I could take a look at your registry. Sure, it's just next door. Miss Poole. I'm terribly sorry. Sorry if we startled you. This is Mr. Joyce. He's checking up on our security arrangements. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Poole? May we interrupt you for a moment? Of course. Now, you make the copies and keep the register, I take it? Yes. Would you just outline the procedure for us? It's very simple, really. Every classified master I receive, I enter in the book, and then I make the required number of copies and file the master. What do you do with the copies? I give them to Mr. Burroughs for distribution. You register those too? Uh, no. No, I don't. Uh, Mr. Burroughs, as this is one of your departments, will you see that every copy is registered? I think you should. After all, from a security point of view, there's no difference between a master and a copy. Yes, I see. I'm glad to see you keep a tight check on the prints. I doubt if we've ever had more than two cases of going astray in all the time I've been here. Then they weren't missing more than 24 hours. Do you think the men realise the importance of keeping their mouths shut? Yes, I do. At home as well as in the pub? <laughs> I'll make that quite clear. How do you get it across? Ah, it's not difficult, really. I talk to them the way they understand. Most of them know what their work means and are sensible about it. Mm. With a few of them, I have to put it another way and remind them that their job depends on keeping their mouths shut. If security gets broke, that's the end of the firm's contract and their job's gone out the window. Then who's to pay for the telly? I can see you're a student of human nature. Man after my own heart. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> well, thank you very much for showing us around. Goodbye. Just on five, I'll ring through and see if the old man's ready for us. Oh, Miss Allison? Yes. Good. We'll be right up. Look, there's something I want to tell you. We've got evidence that there's a leak going on. Oh, dear. I thought there was more to this visit than a routine check. Is it serious? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Not Project X. Yes. My God. See, I did that check just now to confirm an impression. Security arrangements are reasonably satisfactory, but the point is there are sufficient weaknesses for somebody inside this place to exploit them. I see. And that's what I want to discuss with you and your directors. All right. Let's go up. Thank you very much, Mr. Joyce, for all you've told us about this very serious matter and for your very detailed observations. I can only say I hope this business hasn't done any really serious damage. Well, that's a matter on which I'm not really in a position to say anything. Maintaining security in peacetime is a very difficult job. And there's only one answer. Somehow one has to make people realize that there's a very good reason for taking security regulations seriously. Well, I don't think any of us are likely to fall down in that respect in the future. I'm perfectly aware of my own shortcomings in this direction. If one can lose personal property such as an umbrella through absent-mindedness, one can do the same with an important document. Exactly. But you don't lose an umbrella if you know that it's made of gold. <laughs> yes, that's perfectly true. Oh, Mr. Joyce, there's just one thing. It's extremely unpleasant to feel that somewhere in one's own plant there's actually somebody engaged in selling his country's secrets. Have you any idea? I mean, is there anything we can do to help? Well, the one thing you can do to help is to carry on as if you didn't know anything. I may know this man's identity. But if I tell you who it is, there's just a chance you might give him a hint. We want to give him enough rope, and then when the moment's ripe... I understand. We want to give him enough rope, and then when the moment's ripe... Thank you. 